a UCT graduate, becomes South Africa's first black observational ocean biochemist. That's Mshangabezi Mdujana. He is a, a UCT PhD graduate, and uh, he joined hundreds of University of Cape Town students as they received their degrees during a virtual graduation, which was on Tuesday this week. Well, he joins us now from Cape Town uh, to talk us through his educational journey. Bom Tujana, thank you very much for your time. It's one of those rare moments where I get to speak to someone that I address as Umkaya, you are from the town of Umtata, I'm from Mount Frere, but your journey is way more beautiful than mine. You are the son of a domestic worker and a security guard, but who's managed to put himself to where you are today. Briefly sketch for us your academic journey to where you are right now. Wow. Um... Where do I begin? I mean, I, uh, I did my undergrad um, uh, at the University of uh, Walter Sisulu, but I registered when it was UNITRA um, and also did an honors there. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, you know, because we are first generation graduates and all of that, I had to, you know, stop school at the time after my honors and I went on to, do, to, to work uh, a few years. Mm. Um, I went back to school again, uh, and uh, I also dropped out, went back to work again, and then I started this journey in 2015 of of, of working at UCT, mm. um, of studying at UCT, um, where I, I registered for a master's in marine biochemistry, um, and um, that's when the begin the, the journey of this PhD began actually. Yeah. Well, and the normal circumstances, one would have to do their, their masters and finish it first. Then you register for the second time on a PhD. Mm. Um, but in my case, I only registered for a masters and then upgraded from a masters to a PhD, which was unique on its own as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're using the word unique, and some people will view your journey as having been unique to begin with. We're going to talk about what it is that you are now qualified in, which is a, an ocean biochemist. You're going to explain to us what all of that means. But people listening to this story, your story, they're going to say, hey, start with it from where um, we ought to understand it. As I mentioned earlier, you're the son of a domestic worker and a security guard. The, the journey, the educational journey, could not have been easy. Talk to us about where you found resources, for example, uh, to be in school yeah. and continue to be in school up until uh, you obtained the qualification that you have. Did you have to work at some point in order uh, to make sure that you stay in school or was it all to do with um, uh, the bursaries perhaps along the way that helped you? Yeah, I'm actually glad that you asked that question because um, my journey is uh, is one of those journeys where you are not where you are by yourself on your own. Mm -hmm. You are where you are because of uh, countless numbers of people that have supported you, that have poured into your dis and into your into your dream, um, and they've given resources. Um, I it all started when I when I, when I passed my my uh, then standard seven going to standard eight, which is, you know, uh, high school, mm. uh, we didn't have money at, at home. Um, as a result, I had people in my community, um, Tata Christian Church um, guys um, that were uh, assisting me financially. Um, now, as, as a young man, I've always tried to be as independent as I can. So whilst I was doing my high school, I was working on weekends. Um, um, whilst I was doing my undergrad at UNITRA, uh, WUSU, uh, I was working uh, on weekends because I needed to be able to also provide for myself, mm. you know, certain things like your toiletries and other stuff. Mm. Um, and so my high school was supported by, by people at church as well as my, my undergrad. Um, there was a, 
uh, a bursary that the church um, uh, had, um, which was initiated by uh, Pastor Don. Um, so so I, I qualified for that as well. So I did my undergrad. They supported me throughout my undergrad until I finished my undergrad and I started my owners there. Wow. Um, and then in my owners, so I had uh, funding. So within the undergrad as well, I also had um, uh, funding from from NASFAS. Um, um, and uh, so in an owners program, I get I got an uh, I got uh, financial assistance from from the supervisor I was I was I was doing a, a project with. Yeah. Um, my mini dissertation. And but that was not enough. So um, I also had financial assistance from uh, one of my mentors, um, Mr. Mapong uh mm. to clear out my fees at the end of the year, mm. um, which uh, was really important because I've been able to move forward to the next levels after that. Yeah. Um, what yeah. a journey. So and then and then so so because like I said initially that because. I'm a first generation, so when you start getting your degree, one of the things that you want to do is to have a job, right? Is to make money so that you can help your, your family. Yeah. Um, so I stopped school after my honors degree. Uh, I went to work for how long? I think for three years. And then after that, I felt like I still wanted to go back to school. Mm. Um, so I did. And, uh, and then so I went to register at the University of Nelson Mandela for a master's in botany and uh, uh, well, to cut the long story short, I dropped out on that and went back to work, you know, because responsibilities at home uh, needed me. So went back to work and then after that, uh, after two years of going to work again, um, I decided, I remember calling my mom saying to her, listen, I, I want to go back to school. And she was like, so what are we going to do financially? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back to school and I was lucky uh, because when I got to, uni to, to the UCT uh, for a master's program, uh, I did not, uh, I, so I had, a, I had a scholarship with uh, CSLR, but when I got to Cape Town, I realized the scholarship was not enough to leave, yes. right? Um, so one 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 blessing was that I had a friend here, O Avi Wachangan, um, who I you know called up phone and uh, one of the people that have been part of this journey from the start. Yeah. Um. So so I called up phone and she was like, listen, you can you can come stay with me, you know. So I I spent my entire 2016 on a couch. Uh, um. And so. Through that, I was able to take the money that I had and live on it and also be able to send it back home to assist yes. uh, some of it. All right. So that helped a lot. So, so and then from then, I went to, and then at the end of 2016, then my, P, my master's was upgraded to a PhD. Yes. Uh, and then I had, so at, at, at the PhD level, I will not lie to you and say I was struggling in terms of finances. No. I was... Uh, I was funded by two, by three different um, organizations. Yeah. Um, NRF, right. uh, as well as uh, Harry Crossley from UCT, uh, and CSR as, as well. So, yes. All right. Um, that was the journey of the PhD. Uh, financially speaking, it was not a struggle. My goodness. Well, let's talk then in simple language. Mr. Mdujana, mm. because uh, you are highly <laughs> educated for us to understand exactly what it is that you do. In simple language, what is the work of a observational ocean biogeochemist? What is it that you do as wow. a job? Wow. I'm going to try to uh, simplify it. Sometimes I slightly struggle to simplify it myself. Mm. Um, what we do is we study the ocean, but an, o an observational ocean, uh, by, by ocean by geochemistry, we look at the biology involved in, in the ocean, in the ocean's role to absorb carbon dioxide uh, from the atmosphere. We all know that the, 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 the climate change 
revolves around the increasing levels of carbon dioxide, right? Uh -huh. And that creates this imbalance in terms of climate um, variability and all of that. So what, what, what I study is I look at the biology, but specifically I look at the phytoplankton that uses up carbon dioxide um, uh, that actually absorbs carbon dioxide whilst it grows, it's growing on nutrients, uh, nutrients like nitrate and ammonium and nitrite. Yeah. So what this phytoplankton do, they absorb carbon dioxide and they give up, they, they, they release oxygen. Um, so they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which, they, which means they help in limiting, in making sure that the carbon dioxide concentration in the, in the atmosphere mm. remain as low as possible. Mm. So our pets are within manageable concentrations. Wow. Right? So basically, that's what I do. Um, you know, when you, when you see us do, do our work, you, you think we're playing with water because we collect water, right? Um, we collect water and then we perform experiments on them and then we then, you know, eventually draw out conclusions based on what we see yeah. from those results. Finally, Mr. Mdujana, talk to us about that moment when you received the news that you were now or you had now successfully completed your academic journey and you've obtained your PhD, what that feeling was like. And I want you to, as you tell us that feeling inside, give it to us in a form of a, a motivational talk, if you like, to those who are in your position right now and are probably uh, getting assistance from uh, funding sources such as NSFAS, for example. Mm. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, you know, the, when, when I received the, 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 the email that said, listen, your PhD has been approved, it's been accepted, uh, you are now a PhD holder. Um, wow. Uh, I got very emotional, to be honest, um, because it, 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 I, my, my brain quickly went back when I started my undergrad. Sure. Uh, uh, went back there. And, and it went far as going to, when my mom heard that I had passed my grade 12, which was also the first in the family, um, uh, went back there. Yeah. Um, because I had done the impossible. Um, um, I, I, I had achieved what many uh, um, would, have, would have looked at me, especially when I was growing up, I'd be like, mm, you ain't going to be nobody. Uh, but now I was here. Mm. I had my PhD. And it, 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 speak, it spoke to me in the sense that when you have a dream, you pursue it sure. no matter what. You, you also surround yourself with people that are like-minded. Because mm. uh, I've been blessed to have people... That, that that believed in my in my in my in my abilities that believed in in my in my dream as well and they supported it not yeah. only with words but also with the resources yeah and I've been blessed to have those and 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 also I've also been also been blessed because my uh, I'm, I'm I'm a born again Christian so um, my work with God has been really really imperative in this journey yeah so so having certain principles in my life. Um, that have made it possible for me to push forward no matter what. So when, when, when all of this thing, when, when, I, when I was getting this PhD, when I was actually being told, I was like, wow, now the circle has fully, fully, it's been fully realized. Uh, it's, 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 it's come to pass and um, I'm, I'm over the moon, man, um, over the moon. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And um, wow, I... Yeah, I can talk forever. So <laughs> <laughs> I can so talk forever. It's best, it's best for us to, to leave it there and simply to say congratulations to you. May the journey still be bright as you move forward with your career. That is uh, Mtlangabezi Mtujana. He is a, a PhD holder in what is called Observational Ocean Biogeochemist.
We're going to all have to consult our dictionaries here to look exactly what this is all about. Or oh, actually go to the faculty um, where he studied this. Uh, what an interesting journey indeed. Thank you very much for your time, sir, and sharing your story with us.